The book of Psalm, chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scoffers. Let me read it again. Psalm 1, 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word given light. I pray this moment that you will speak to us. Open our eyes to see the things you want us to see from your word. Open our ears to hear this word and to hear your rhema. Open our hearts to receive this word. Glorify your name through this word and strengthen our faith, O oh God. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Have your way, Holy Spirit. I pray that I may decrease, that you might increase. Let Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to speak to us this morning on what I've called walking with God. Walking with God. The word of God is clear where we read. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Now, the word walking is an active word. You cannot walk with somebody and be static or stagnant. Walking is an active word. It means you are active. You are doing something. You are, you, you know, you are moving. Walking with God means that you are active with God. You are moving with God. It means that you are engaged in a relationship with God. You cannot walk with God unless you have a relationship. And you cannot keep working with him unless you have an ongoing relationship with him. But the Bible, the Bible was talking about those who walk not in the council of the wicked, not on the, in the council of the ungodly. In other words, this person, this man, is working with God because he's not working in the council of the wicked. He's not working in the council of the ungodly. So I want to share with us about six things, if I have enough time. If I have enough time, maybe seven. But I want to share some of this thought on how to, what it means to walk with God. Number one, walking with God involves fellowship with God. Walking with God involves what? Fellowship with God. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24. Enoch walked with God and he disappeared. <laughs> I like this translation. Because God took him away. Enoch walked with God. And then he disappeared. Some translations will say, and he was no more. Because God took him away. Psalm 1 verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. When you walk with God, it means you are having fellowship with God. You cannot walk with God except you have a deep fellowship with him. I love the story about Enoch and his work with God. Enoch was so intimate with God. He had so much fellowship with God. He communed with God so much. Have you ever had a friend or someone that you are so fond of? You spend so much time together. You are either in his place or he is in your place. Every time you see the person, you see the other person. And such friendship, if it does last, it lasts and people can naturally see. You are looking for this person, you say, oh, go to his place, he's over there. Or you are looking for the other person, you say, you know, if he's not here, just go to the, his friend's place. Now, that is what you call a friendship that is so tight and so intimate. They can't do without each other. And God was so close, or Enoch was so close, so intimate, in fellowship with God. I don't know if he had any time for any other person. I don't know, the Bible didn't tell us if he had a family, if he didn't tell us if he had children, grandchildren. I, I, I will assume he didn't. Because there was almost no time for anything else. His time and his passion 
that his compassion was all about God. He walked with God in the morning, in the noon time, in the midnight. I don't know if he does sleep a lot because he must have spent most of his life in time of fellowship with God. He had a deep fellowship with God. To the point that God said, you know what? There's no point having you in this world. Whereas we are always spending time together. You might as well just come over and live with me in heaven. And God took him. He was the first person. Apart from Elijah who eventually got to, to heaven. He was the first person that God took to heaven. Why would God take a man out of this world? That was because he was so fond of him. Have you ever been in a relationship? You are so fond of somebody. And do you know that many times when marriage, marriage happens, it's because two people love themselves so much. They are so fond of themselves so much. Am I right? When they decide, you know what? Let's just get married. <laughs> Because we are so fond of ourselves, of ourselves, we want to spend time together, we want to be with each other every time, we might as well just get married. So Enoch was so much in fellowship with God, God said, you know what, just leave this world, just come over to heaven and be, and live with me, because I am so in a relationship, in fellowship with you, and that was how Enoch disappeared. But you see, if he wasn't having deep fellowship with God, so there was no way God could have taken him away if he didn't walk with him in fellowship. So walking with God means that you are in fellowship with him. You are walking with God means that you are walking with him in fellowship. You enjoy a deep fellowship. It's impossible to walk with God and you are not having fellowship with him. Fellowship with him in prayers, fellowship with him in the world, fellowship with him meditating in his world. You need to be in a place where he is your passion. He is your all-consuming passion. You are sleeping, you are thinking of him. You are waking up, you are thinking of him. Everything about you is about God. When people talk about talk to you, the next thing they will hear is talk and talk about God because he is everything to you. That is because you are in a fellowship with him. It's impossible for you to be in fellowship with God and you don't talk to him for a long time. It's impossible for God, for you to be in fellowship with God and God will say, hey, I've not heard for you in a long time. No, if you are in a fellowship with him, almost every minute, every hour, every day, you are communing with him. You are talking with him. You are communicating with him because you are in fellowship with him. That was what happened with Enoch. He was in fellowship with God. He walked with God. He so walked with God to, to the point that God took him away. And then Psalm 1, 2, where we read once again, he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now, the grace of God and the fellowship uh, uh, and, and the, the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to have fellowship with God. If you want to walk with God and want to enjoy a deep fellowship with God, you have to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. You have to become intimate with the Holy Spirit because he is the one that introduces you to a close and deep and intimate relationship with God the Father and God the Son. So fellowship with the Holy Spirit is what makes our walk with God possible today. I believe that Enoch had an encounter with the Holy Spirit at a time way back then in the book of Genesis. I believe he must have encountered the Holy Spirit at and had a close communion and fellowship and walk with him which was what made his walk with God possible. So if you want to walk with God, walking with God means that you are walking in fellowship with him. That you have a deep communion 
with the Holy Spirit, that you are in tune with the Holy Spirit. You are in tune with the Lord Jesus through His Spirit. You are in tune with God the Father through the Holy Spirit. That is the only way. That is the only uh, means by which we can walk with God by having a deep fellowship with Him. Amen. Amen. Number two, walking with God involves making progress. You cannot walk with God without making progress. Walking with God, it, it demands you are making progress. James chapter 4, verse 8. James 4, 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. There is no way you walk with God, and you are not making progress in your, in your relationship with God. If God is over here, and you are over there. The Bible says in the book of James 4, it says, draw near to God. That means as you are walking towards God, every time you take a step towards God, God takes a step towards you. Every time you take a step towards God, God takes a step towards you. That means he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So if I want to walk with God, if I want a close relationship with God, I've got to constantly be close, walking towards God. I've got to be walking with him. As long as you're walking with him, God is, is working with you. As long as you're making effort to draw close to God, God is going to be drawing close to you. If God sees the hunger in your heart, if he sees the desire in your heart, if he sees that you want to walk with him, you want to walk close with him, you want to be in fellowship with him, you, as you make progress in taking steps towards him, he's going to make progress. But if you, if God stays over there and you're over here and you make no effort, you make, take no step, you don't walk towards him, guess what? God is just going to be there looking at you, waiting for you to move. It's not his move, it is your move. If you want to be close to God, if you want to be intimate with God, if you want to walk with God, you have to initiate the move. It's not on God, it's on you. I said it's not on God, it's on you. You have to initiate the move. You have to show God that you want a relationship with him. You have to show God you will have and you need a fellowship. You want a fellowship with him. You have to show God you want to walk with him. That is when it happens. It has to happen by you initiating the move. By you drawing closer to him. He says, once again, James 4, 8, draw near to God or draw close to God and he will draw near to you. In other words, it's on you. So working with God means you are making progress. Number three, working with God involves agreement. Working with God involves agreement. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two work together except they be agreed or they be in agreement? It's impossible for two people to work in, together except they're in agreement. And why do marriages fall or fall apart or fail? One of the main reasons is because the two people are not in agreement. There is, I remember many years ago, I attended a, a marriage seminar and the man was using, um, he was using something to de demonstrate why it's impossible, impossible for a marriage to succeed if the, the two are not in agreement and he brought out a couple and they used a the rope and as they were standing side by side he used the rope and tied their leg and then he said okay walk now for both of them to walk they both have to be in agreement because there are two legs one of their legs each is tied so they both have to be in agreement to walk if this person wants to go and the other person wants to go the other way they can't it can't succeed because they are tied together now, that is for marriage. Now, when you talk about working with God, it's impossible for you to walk with God unless you are in agreement with God. You've got to be in agreement with His Word. You've got to be in agreement with His principle. If His Word says go this way, you can't say, I want to go this way. If His principle says go this way, you can't say, oh, I know I want to go the other way. Everything He says, you have to be in agreement. There's no point A or point B. No option A, option B. Every Everything he says, you've got to agree. Even the things you don't agree with, you have no option than to agree. Why? Because if you want to work with him, you need to be in agreement. Come to work together 
except they be in agreement. The, 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 the answer is two cannot work together in life, in ministry, in family, in marriage. Two people cannot work together. And you see, the word is is called is incompatibility. More marriages have fallen apart as a result of incompatibility than any other thing. When I hear marriages fall or fail, in fact, even among ministers, I've had many failed marriages, and the first thing I always say to myself, and when I hear the story, the first, the thing that always becomes the key root problem is the fact that they are incompatible. When some, when two people are incompatible, you always want to go this way, and they always want to go this way, and there's no meeting ground and there's no willingness to shift ground and shift ground and find a common ground to work on. When there is so much incompatibility, it, you, you can be sure that a marriage will fail. You can be sure a relationship will fail. And if you are going to work with God and you are incompatible with God, if your choices and your ways and the things you want to do are incompatible with God's ways and you are not ready to give up whatever you want to do so that God you will serve me to God's ways, then you can walk with God. Walking with God means and requires that you are in agreement with Him. Agree with His principles. Agree with His word. Agree with what He says. Even when He rebukes you, agree with His rebuke. That is the only way you can walk with God. Walking with God means you are in agreement with Him. Can two walk together? Except they be in agreement. The answer is no. They can't work together. So if you want to work with God, you've got to be in agreement with him. Number four, working with God involves not working with the enemy. <laughs> Have you heard the saying, my enemy's enemy is my enemy? <laughs> there is no way you can want to work with God and yet you want to work with his enemy. If you are going to walk with God, that means that you can't walk with God's enemy. Look once again, look at uh, Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, Psalm 1, 1, where we read before. He says, he walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of of the wicked. In other words, you want to walk with God, that automatically means that you cannot walk with his enemies. The counsel of the wicked, the wicked and the enemies of God are the people that you cannot listen to. You can't claim to be walking with God and you are taking advice for, from God's enemies. You can't claim to walk with God and you are listening to and you are obeying and you are taking advice from God's enemy. You are copying God's enemy. You are causing their, you are copying their standard. You are copying imitating what they do and yet you are walking with God. It's impossible. If you want to walk with God, you must Shun the enemy. You not just the enemy. You must shun God's enemy. Whoever is an enemy of God is your enemy. If the enemy of God comes your way, that enemy of God is your enemy. And who is God's enemy? The devil is his enemy. The world is his enemy. Demons are his, are his enemy. Everything that belongs to the world is an enemy of God. So if you want to walk with God, you've got to shun the world. You've got to shun demons and devils. You've got to shun idol worship. You've got to shun the ways of the world. The flesh is an enemy of God. You've got to shun the flesh because if you want to walk with God, you cannot walk with God at the same time and walk with his enemies. You cannot walk with God at the same time you take advice or counsel or you copy or you imitate God's enemy. Walking with God means you are not going to walk with his enemies. Amen. Number five, working with God involves productivity. I love this. It's impossible to work with God and not be productive in life. If you are going to work with God, automatically you will be productive. Look at Psalm 1 verse 3. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in season and out of season. And its leaves does not wither. That means being productive in life is a fringe benefit of working with God. Being productive in 
life is a fringe benefit of working with God. The moment you begin to work with God, you are guaranteed to be productive. I don't know about you. If you develop a hunger to begin to work with God, if you develop a desire to begin to work with God, and you actually begin to work with Him, when you work with God, you will be productive. I've come to prophesy to somebody as you work with God, I declare in Jesus' name, your life will be productive. Somebody is not listening to me. I declare in Jesus' name, as you begin to walk with God, as you walk with God all your life, whatever you lay hands upon shall prosper. Whatever you lay hands upon shall succeed. You will be productive. You will be fruitful because you are working with God. And when you walk with God, the fringe benefit is that you will be productive. Everything stopping your productivity. From today, I banish them from your lives. Everything that is hindering your productivity, from today, I bring it to an end. And I declare you will be productive. Say to yourself, because I'm working with God, or oh, say like you mean it, because I'm working with God, I will be productive. Because I'm working with God, I will be fruitful in Jesus' name. So working with God requires or makes you to be productive. You will, you must be productive when you work with God. Number six, working with God involves prosperity. I love that. <laughs> working with God involves, you will prosper when you work with God. Once again, look at Psalm 1, 3, the people of it. In all that he does, he prospers. I didn't say it. <laughs> That's God's word saying it. He's talking of the man that is working with God. He is like the tree that, plant, that is planted by the streams of water that yields its fruits in season and its leaves does not wither. And whatever he does, in all he does, he prospers. That means that when you begin to walk with God, you will begin to prosper in your ways. I'm telling you, God wants you to prosper. I don't know whatever you think you are doing. I don't know whatever you believe, but you better believe the word of God. The Bible says, in whatever he does, he shall prosper. I don't know about you, but I declare over my life, and I prophesy over me. If you don't believe me, that's up to you. I prophesy as long as I walk with God, I must prosper. If you believe it, prophesy it over yourself. Claim me for yourself. I am working with God. And as long as I walk with God, I must prosper. I declare according to the word of the Lord that whatever he does shall prosper. I declare I shall prosper in my life. I shall prosper in my finances. I shall prosper in my family. I shall prosper in my business because I'm working with God. Declare it for yourself. Confess it for yourself. Father, your word says I shall prosper if I walk with you. I therefore declare as I walk with you, may I prosper, oh God. Father, prosper me. Come on. Turn it into a prayer now. Ask him, Father, prosper me now. Father, prosper my life. Prosper my finances. Prosper me in ministry. Prosper me in every area of life because your word says that when I walk with you, whatever I do shall prosper. I prophesy over you now. As you walk with God, you will prosper. I prophesy as you walk with God, your life will prosper. Your finances will prosper. In your job, you will prosper. In your business, you will prosper. Every area of your life, you must prosper. In Jesus' name. The key thing is that you are working with God. The priority should be that you walk with God. As long as you are working with God, Productivity is going to be a byproduct. Prosperity is going to be a byproduct. I prophesy I am blessed. Oh, say to yourself, I prophesy I am blessed. I prophesy I am prospered. I shall enjoy prosperity all the days of my life. I shall enjoy productivity all the days of my life because I am walking with God. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven, beginning to round up. Working with God involves direction. 
When you walk with God, you will not be confused. God is going to give you direction. Amen. Psalm 1 verse 6. Verse 6. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. In other words, when you begin to walk with God, God knows your ways and is going to order your steps. In Isaiah, he says, and you shall hear the voice behind your ears and will say, walk in the path, walk in this way. This is the way to follow, walk in it. When you walk with God, God is not going to leave you confused. When you are confused, that just means you're not walking with God. Every time you need to make a choice, every time you need to make a decision, it's a matter of listening. If you're walking with God, you just need to listen because God is going to give you direction. He's going to speak to you. Are you trying to make a choice? Are you trying to make a decision? If you have things you need to do, to decide to do or not to do, if you are working with God, God is going to speak to you. If you are working with God, God is going to give you direction. The key thing, the priority now is to develop your work, develop your fellowship, develop your intimacy with God. As you walk with God, anytime you need direction, God is going to give you direction because walking with God involves direction. And if you are making the wrong step or taking the wrong step or making the wrong turn, he's going to direct you as well. He's going to say, oh, no, 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 that's not the way. Get off that track. Go on the next exit because you can never get lost when you're walking with God. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes. When you are walking with God, you can never get lost. Amen. You won't get lost in life. You won't get lost in ministry. You won't get lost in your career. Any area of life, wherever you need, wherever you need direction, God is going to give you direction by His Holy Spirit, by the inner voice, by the inner witness. He's going to speak to you. He's going to give you direction. But you need to listen. I need to obey. I pray for you now. May you receive direction in life. If you are confused in any area, if there is something you need to do and you are confused, you are trying to get direction, receive direction in the name of Jesus. May God speak to you. May God direct you. May he open your eyes to see. Open your ears to hear. May he lead you by the inner voice. May he lead you by the inner witness. May he lead you by the green light of your inside to show you which way to go, to show you which direction to go. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will not be confused in life. You will not miss your destiny, your path on in life. You will follow the right path and the right track. God will order your steps. God will lead you by the hand. I pray for you and I prophesy. The Lord will direct your steps. You will not miss it in life. You will, you will follow his leading unto the end until he lead you into the eternal home in heaven. I pray for you now. May you not fail. May you not miss your way. Come on, talk to God now. Stand on your feet. I'm telling you, Father, help me to develop a closer walk with you. I want to walk with you all the days of my life. Help me that I will not miss you. Help me, Lord, that I will walk with you so closely to the end of my life that will lead me by the hand into your heavenly home. Help me, Lord. May I not miss you. May I not fail you help me to walk with you all the days of my life that I will walk with you so intimately like Enoch did help me Lord just talk to him from your heart talk to him because the key the priority should be walking with God when you walk with God he will prosper your ways when you walk with him he will direct your step when you walk in with him he will make you productive when you walk with him you will be in agreement with him come on tell him father help me to walk with you. Everything that is a distraction. Whatever the enemy is trying to use to distract me, to make me not to follow your path and your voice. Deliver me from the hands of the enemy. Deliver me from distractions. Deliver me from deception. I declare Satan cannot distract me. The world cannot distract me. I must walk with God. I will walk with God all the days of my life to the end of my life. Come on, talk to him now. My Pavabo, Shekata, Lebrovabo, Vabo, Zata, Makata, Zekebebo, Shekata, Rago Bako Pavava, Zendebo Kabo, Shekata, Librovabova Sata, Ekabova Bova Sataya, Zekebo Kata, 
Le grave bazar. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for you now. May you walk with God from this day and henceforth. May you walk with God in a more intimate way, in a more passionate way. May God put a love and a hunger and a desire in your heart to walk with him in a more passionate way all the days of your life to the end of life. And as you walk with God, you will be directed. You will not miss your way. You will not be confused. As you walk with God, I declare, you will not Fall, you will not fumble, you will not falter. As you will you walk with God, I declare, you will prosper in all your ways. You will be productive in your ways, in all you do. I declare, as you walk with God, God will walk with you. And God will be glorified in your life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody says amen. amen. Let's lift our offering, our title, our seed.